thank you for being here today, this beautiful day in Memphis. Um, and thank you, Whitney and the Young Arts patrons for, for inviting me here. I've never been to Memphis before. So I'm here today to talk about uh, this, this crazy, uh, crazy idea I had about 10 years ago that's sort of um, taken over my life. Um, but I wanted to start out with an image of my work. Um, so this is, this is my, my first and uh, so far only um, solo show in New York. And um, as a young artist, I finished an MFA from the Maryland Institute College of Art in 2005. And um, I had this critique with, um, with Grace Hardigan, who is uh, now deceased, but she was a very um, sort of significant female artist in the 60s, hanging out with the Abex bad boys. Um, I had a crit with her, and she hated the shit out of my work. And um, she said, why are you trying to make these paintings bad on purpose? Which that's, I don't know, you know, that's, that's a tough thing to answer. Um, but it, obviously it stuck with me, this question. And um, for me as an artist, it's essential that my work tells stories that feel authentic, right? And that's not perfect. That's not harmonious, right? Even the most you know, ideal uh, moments of our lives, there's always, you know, that, that little piece of toilet paper stuck to your foot, right? There's always something. Um, so for me, as an artist, um, I thought it would be important to show you um, where I started. And um, I've always worked with concepts from popular culture, combining image and text. And um, in the case of my artwork, I'm using poetic and abstract language to tell a story that I want to be layered, uh, complex, and, um, and sort of like beautifully flawed. That's something that, that's important to me. So that idea of authenticity. Um, so image and text, um, realizing it in, in a lot of different forms. And as a young artist, my love of text and writing um, led me into a direction that I never really expected. Um, so as a young artist, I started writing about other people's art. And I found that this was a really um, a meaningful way for me to understand my work, understand the way that I talk to people about the work, um, to be sort of open and generous to potential audience who might not understand my work. Or I mean, I think a lot of people are intimidated by contemporary art. I don't know why they would be intimidated by this, but, um, but just thinking about it in that way. And, um, and so now I'm at a point where I have a lot of people that say, well, do you still make art? So uh, I'm the editor and publisher of a web scene and, and print journal based in Baltimore called Be More Art. That has evolved. And um, this isn't anything I ever really expected to be doing. And, um, and I love it. Um, but I do find that question problematic. Yes, I fucking make art. This is my art. Right? So in this case, I'm very interested in the culture of artists and using language, but using language to be clear um, and direct and challenging. Um, and so I, I really see this as another side of my practice that's collaborative and community-based. So that's how I like to think about it. So living the dream, making the magazines, um, but how do we do this, right? How do artists, you know, the word sustainability, I think is, you know, that's one of those ideal dream words that we all would like to claim. Um, I can't claim that. I'm not sure if it's something that we can ever necessarily claim as creative people, but um, how, do we, how do we do our things? Artists have crazy ideas. We want to bring them into the world, you know? Just because, just because we want to see this thing and hold this thing. Um, so how do we do this? And in my case, um, it involved doing a lot of different things, a lot of work, some teaching, 
a lot of writing, and um, in the beginning, a lot of it uh, I didn't get paid for. But it was uh, for the process of learning. Um, so something a lot of people don't know about me is that um, when I was nine, I was a very uh, successful and prolific author of a series of children's books. This is uh, before the band existed, but I am a big Smiths fan. So this is the 80s. And um, when I was in third grade, um, I had a, a best friend, and she and I wrote books together. And when the other kids were out on the playground playing kickball and trying to kiss boys, um, we were sitting at a table together with our heads bent over paper and pencils and crayons, and we were laughing and cracking ourselves up. And this is what we love doing. I feel like as artists, a lot of times we know who we are very early on, and then in my case, I feel like I spent about two decades getting back to this point, right? It's almost like we have to give ourselves permission to do the things that we are meant to do, that somehow we're, you know, we're supposed to do other things that we don't like as much, that we're not as interested in. And um, I'm not sure why it's such a hard lesson to learn. Um, so this idea of, of creative vision, right? And, and sort of believing that that thing that you want, you know, inside your self, you know, your heart, soul, whatever that is, um, that thing that you so deeply want that you can't live without it, like giving yourself the permission to actually do that thing. Um, so I, I'm married to someone who is not an artist, and I, I think it's a good thing for me anyway. And um, I'll, we'll get into these conversations where I, I'm like, I want to do this thing, I, but it's, I can't do it. It's not going to work. I don't have the money. I don't have the, how do I, and he's like, it's not like the whole world is trying to do this, you know? Like nobody else is like in front of you in line to like do the things you want to do. Just let yourself do it. See what happens. Make the mistakes. Um, so this is something I'm really working on now. Now that the publication is sort of transitioned into something that pays my salary, that has employees, um, that's that's you know garnering a lot of traffic um, on web, and and you have the print journal in front of you, um, but sort of allowing and sort of like forcing myself to think differently. I'm someone who likes to be embedded in the moment. I like surprises. You know, I think this is the attraction of, of journalism and writing, that you get to talk to people, you get to ask them nosy questions that they would never answer, except that you're writing a story about them. And initially, this is something, you know, my artist self wanted to know. So my work has always been autobiographical. I think all art is autobiographical, actually. Um, and um, this is sort of where we started out. So after grad school, there were a lot of blogs happening, sort of informal, and people were taking them seriously. I had a friend from grad school. He was like, yeah, let's start an art blog. Baltimore doesn't have one. Let's do it. Um, and so you know, it's free. You can do a WordPress. Anybody can do it. Um, and I you know, filled it out and put in our information and popped up on the internet. And when I told my friend who was supposed to do this thing with me, he was like, I'm not a good writer. <laughs> and then he just walked away from it, never looked back. And I just thought, OK, well, I, I'm going to keep with this. I'm going to see what happens. And I think luckily in the beginning, I didn't really understand that there were web analytics to see what your traffic was. This is like 2007. Um, so I didn't really realize you know, how many people were watching. And, and I think in the beginning, with any kind of creative work, maybe you don't really need that scrutiny. I mean, Instagram is wonderful. But um, I, I, you know, for a new little baby kind of a project, maybe we don't need to know how many likes it has in the beginning. Um, so I thought this would be helpful to you if you uh, if you would like to start your own art publication. It's that simple, right? Yeah, it's not simple. Um, 
And at a certain point, you, you sort of just, you know, for me anyway, I was just sort of like doing this work and, and transitioning from more of an artist who used text to someone who uses text to write about art. You know, I, it's two sides of the same, same coin, but it was a, a transition for me. Um, as artists, what we create isn't always valued. I, I was talking to someone at this conference this weekend who was a full-time artist, and they were talking about the fact that people say, oh, you're an artist? That must be so fun. What do you do all day? Right? I mean, if we don't value what we do and we're not able to express that value, other people aren't going to understand it. And so I, I'm really seeing this as my mission, as opposed to like, I made this cool thing. Everyone should pay attention because it's great. You know, I, that doesn't really serve anybody. It definitely doesn't serve me. So the idea that what we do is valuable collectively, you know, and if, if we don't share the stories, art is ephemeral. It doesn't matter how good the exhibition is. If after the show is gone, nobody's written about it. And, and realizing that that record I mean, the internet is forever, right, as far as we know. So the responsibility of that, that what we write is going to be consumed, and it sort of becomes this archive and this historical narrative, I think it's true of artwork, and I think it's true of art writing. So thinking about it in that way. So at this point, this is more what the publication looks like. Uh, from the beginning, I, I didn't want it to be about me. It was never a personal thing. It's about a community, and a lot of it is just about how do I get people to show up to things, right? The arts are amazing. There's so many good artists in Baltimore. How do we share this information in a way that makes it easier for people to show up? And, and what can I tell them? How can I tell this story in a way that makes them realize that this, this art is actually it's actually something that is going to feed them. It's actually something that's going to challenge them. It's, it's something that's going to make their world better. So it's really that simple. So we offer a calendar. I have a very wonderful person who, who keeps this going on the regular every day. We have a resource guide. So if you come to Baltimore and you want to know where are the galleries, where are the museums, where are the uh, arts organizations, that's something we offer as well. Um, doing a call for entry so that artists have opportunities to exhibit their work and get funding. Uh, it's, it's blossomed into social media as well, which is a really fun thing. It's also a double-edged sword, so I try not to spend too much time in that gross world. Um, and then we went into print. So in two th 2015, after being online for about six or seven years, I got the crazy idea that I wanted to make a print journal. The print journal is not the same as online, right? It, it's for a different purpose. Um, for the first time, I was able to work with photographers and hire them to make beautiful images. Um, it's designed to be something that's collected and, and saved. It's not a throwaway magazine. It's, it's sort of somewhere between a journal, a curated exhibition in print, um, and a periodical. So it's sort of all of these things, which is really fun. There's no rules, but it also makes it confusing to people who, you know, do they sell it? Do they buy it? How, where is it available? Um, so the problem of, you know, making a beautiful object is that once you make it, I mean, artists, how many of you guys are artists here as everybody? I mean, if you make if you make a lot of art and it doesn't go into the world, you have a storage problem, right? I'm not trained in uh, distribution and marketing and sales, you know? I'm an artist. So with this product that was new and exciting and, and terrifying, um, I had to figure out how to get it, you know, into people's hands, how to get it out in the world. Um, and so we also realized at that time that, you know, we have online, we have print, um, but none of this is, um, uh, none of this replaces meeting in person, right? 
we, we, people want to congregate. People want to come together. This is how energy is exchanged. This is why you're here. Um, so we realized that each magazine required a giant blowout party. So this one um, was for issue three at the Walters Art Museum. So it's great to you know bring people you know into cultural uh, spaces uh, to celebrate the magazine, to celebrate the people in it, um, and to celebrate the community that we're in. So sometimes my job leads me into you know strange situations, and and typically my answer is yes. I, I tend to say yes to most things. So. Um, this was an interview with John Waters at the Baltimore Museum of Art, um, talking to him about his retrospective. Um, had a very strange conversation, of course, it's John Waters. And um, what's been really fun for me is sort of to, to ride this wave and see where it goes. So I said yes to the interview with him. I was sort of terrified, but it was fine. And then it led to writing a piece about Baltimore's art scene for New York Magazine. So someone saw everything leads to something else. So I think that's really exciting too. And again, it's not about it's not about me or what I'm doing, but it's about what's happening in my community and, and figuring out how to let more people know about it. And um, it's also led to studio tours where I'm taking people, you know, from out of town to visit Baltimore Studios. It's led to a speaker series that we're working on right now. Um, around collecting the work of Baltimore-based artists. And art practice is solitary. As artists, we tend to spend a lot of time alone in our studio making the stuff. Um, but at the same time, the art isn't complete until it goes out into the world. It has to be consumed. It has to reach an audience. How do we do this? You know, I loved Whitney's video at the beginning where she talked about the expansion of the art world beyond, you know, New York, beyond the, the art market. You know, what is the art market? How do we create a, a local art market in our place where we live? What does this mean? You know, what is cultural currency? How do we define it? Um, not making it be about ego, making it about community as much as possible. And, um, at this point, we're revving up for issue seven. I have to get back to Baltimore <laughs> to, to get this thing done. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really curious, though, if you have questions for me about, I, I think one of the things that was mentioned at the beginning was like, how do artists get press? How do, how do artists work with press? Um, how do artists respond to negative press, which drives traffic? So questions for me? 